Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and today we're going to build a wall. That's right, we've got ourselves prepped here at Gamma LED Vision in Florida, and we're going to put together an LED wall and show you in this video as well as following videos what you need to know about how to build an LED wall, what you need to know if you're thinking about buying an LED wall, uh, things to look out for that you're going to see places that might be selling LED walls that might look a little bit too good to be true. They probably are, and we'll tell you about that. And uh, last but not least, we'll show you how to configure one. So we're going to get it all here and uh, starting with building it. So I'm going to hop in with Chris here, who's going to help me, and we're going to put together a 2.9 millimeter pitch LED wall. And in future videos, don't worry if you don't understand that. We'll talk about what that means. All right, let's build a wall. First thing we're going to do is grab our various supplies. So every LED wall is going to need a processor. This is Gamma's. It's a Novastar based system. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. Novastar is easily the most common wall that you see uh, for uh, entertainment or churches or places like that. Uh, most walls here in the U.S. are Novastar. And then we've got our panels and then we've got cables. Uh, we're going to need power cables. We're going to need data cables. Uh, Pretty much every panel you're going to buy, even if it's for an installation, um, there, there, there are some that, that vary. They're going to come in a road case. Um, these generally have to be shipped in road cases. You can do shipping crates with some brands, but ultimately it shaves very little off the price. Um, I do like the cases that Gamma has here. We'll just show you here. This is their Elite series. And the reason why I like these cases is actually a couple things I really like about them. We'll bring in uh, the second camera nice and close. Is that the dividers in between the panels here actually leave a gap in the middle of the case. Um, and so that's just like a subtle little thing where a lot of the other cases, the divider goes all the way across. And then if you want to use it for something different later, it's kind of hard to. Uh, but these, if you're installing your wall and you don't really need the cases, you know, they make great carts, they're great for holding cables, um, they work well. So we've got our panels, we've got our cables, we're going to go ahead and start building. David and Chris will start removing the panels from the flight cases and prepare them to stack them onto the stacking gear. They have now joined two panels together and will now place them onto the stacking frame. Here you can see both Chris and David fastening the panels with bolts to the stacking gear. Here you can see Chris making sure the panels are fastened properly to the stacking gear as well as lining up the panels to each other to ensure your pixels line up correctly. After building the bottom row of panels, David and Chris are making sure everything is fastened properly and now they are leveling the ground support to make sure you can build the remaining panels safely, securely and level. Once you are happy with the first line of LED panels and your ground support structure is level and secure, you can then start building the second row of LED panels as Chris and David are doing here. Please make sure to clip in and use the rigging hardware on the LED panels to make sure they are secured to each other and secured to the structure. They are now attaching the third row of LED panels to the wall and ground support system. They also need to attach these panels to the back brace which attaches to the two panels 
in the middle to support them to the ground support system. They are first going to connect the panels to the bottom row and then they will connect it to the support. After building the complete wall, this is a good time to go through all your latches and attachments to make sure they are all secure and safely in place. Enough of me, back to David, let's hear how the video wall build has gone and what they experienced during the build. Alright, so now we've built a simple wall with 4x4 panels or 16 total. Now typically you might go with more of a widescreen look, but for the sake of this video, we're just doing a square wall. Um, Things to remember from our setup. Uh, make sure if you're putting it on the ground like we did here, we've got a nice ground support system. Make sure it's nice and level. Uh, we didn't do that the best and it came to bite us in the butt, but we fixed it. Um, also, just always be careful when you're putting the panels in and you're pulling them out of the cases. Be careful with the sides, the edges, the corners. That's why many of them come with corner protectors like these panels from Gamma. Uh, but whether they have the protectors or not, there's a point where you have to retract that protector and you need to be careful with it. You can damage them. Uh, other than that, always remember to figure out exactly how your latches work. Uh, these ones uh, had you push in on the tab, then push the latch through, let go of the tab and twist. Uh, over time, these tend to change and it varies by manufacturer. So you want to be aware of that as well. Now we're going to go ahead, hop to the back side and go ahead and wire it up. Now, when it comes to wiring an LED wall, uh, there, there's really only two things you got to care about. You've got power and you've got data. They don't have to be wired the same way. You can wire for power as many as you can fit on a circuit if you want, okay, or split it evenly between however many circuits of power you have. Uh, most decent walls will also be auto ranging from 120 to 250 volts, okay, um, just like this one. Data you want to follow a consistent pattern. There's so many ways you can go. You can snake like this. You can snake side to side. Uh, the biggest key is just to snake in some direction and make sure, and whoever gets you your wall, whoever sells you your wall should tell you this, uh, how many of these panels you can put on one run of data cable from your processor. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead, wire this guy up, and we'll be back uh, to show you what we did. All right, and then the last step, once you've built the wall, hooked up the wires, is to go ahead and configure it. We're going to do that in another video, but as you can see, it's about, I mean, honestly, configuration, hooking up the processor, it's a 10 minute process. We've done that here. We've got it set up here. We've got a nice desktop background here, uh, nothing fancy. But as you can see, uh, building and setting up an LED wall really isn't rocket science, and we can help you. So if you think an LED wall might be right for you, let us know over at Learn Stage Lighting Gear. We've got our gear experts, uh, myself and others, available to help you figure out if it's right for you, 
And then make sure that you get an LED wall that's going to fit your needs, that's going to do the right things, that's going to be in it for the long haul, and is going to fit your needs so that five years down the road, you don't hate the fact that you bought an LED wall. Um, we see that every day. We hate that, and we want to alleviate that. So if that resonates with you, hit us up. We'd love to help you guys out uh, with any questions you have. And uh, if you do need an LED wall, we always look at multiple brands so that we can find the best fit for you. Until next time, thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in our next video and over on Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Thanks.